$2,000, 12th gen Core i7, RTX 3050 Ti. The Asus ZenBook Pro Duo 14 is a premium package with premium specs. But let's be honest, you don't care about that boring stuff. You care about this little guy right here, the screen pad. The 12.7 inch 120 hertz touchscreen here on the keyboard. The tiny external monitor that's built right into the chassis. It looks very cool, but what do you actually do with it? In the past, the answer has been not that much. Asus has been trying this sort of thing for a number of years and it hasn't gone great. There's been a 14 incher, a 15 incher, even a giant gaming rig. And in reviewing those models, I always had trouble figuring out exactly what to do with that second screen. On these past models, that screen pad has been tiny, it's been low resolution, it's been dim, it's been full of glitches and resizing issues, and worst of all, it's been fairly flat to the ground, meaning I couldn't really see much of what was there without craning my neck to look. For as long as I've been reviewing ZenBook Duos, the screen pad has been a place to dump Twitter and Facebook and whatever other distractions I didn't want to look at. But Asus has done this ZenBook Pro Duo differently in a few ways. So this year's screen pad is very bright, it has a higher refresh rate, and more importantly, Asus has raised the screen pad 12 degrees above the keyboard deck. And for the first time since I started reviewing dual screen devices, I can actually see the stuff that's on it. I can see every detail of pictures and read every word of articles, and I don't need to lean over at all. This has changed the game. I've actually been using the screen pad. I've been using it in a variety of different ways. And to show you how useful I found the second screen, I figured I'd take you through the typical day of a dual screen laptop user. So the first thing I do when I sign on at 9 a.m. is take a few minutes to chat with my colleagues, check my emails, and get up to speed with the news of the previous day. So I put Slack on the screen pad and split the top screen between emails and the news. Slack doesn't quite fit on the screen pad and it looked a bit weird when I expanded it, but hey, I could read my messages and that's the most important thing. I could easily view all three things at once from my office chair. Things were starting to feel a bit quiet, so I opened up Spotify and stuck that on the bottom screen with Slack so it was out of the way. The screen pad was perfect for scrolling through playlists and skipping through tracks while I sipped my morning coffee. As the morning dragged on, I got bored of sitting at my desk, so I took the ZenBook over to the couch, and this turned out to be a huge mistake. The location of the keyboard at the front of the device means there's nowhere to put your hands, and on a desk that's not a huge problem, you can just push the laptop further away, but on the couch, you are going to be typing with your hands tucked up against your chest like a T-Rex. So I ended up just ditching the keyboard and touchpad and just using the stylus to navigate everything, but that's also not ideal because the top screen has some serious screen wobble. Now, some of you love having your keyboard in the front. This kind of device would be great for all of you. But if you haven't tried a front mounted keyboard before and you do intend to use this device on your lap, that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, back at my desk. I had an article I needed to write referencing a bunch of in-depth spec sheets, which is what you spend 99% of your time doing if you're a laptop reviewer like me. So I full screened my Google Doc on the top screen and put the spec sheets on the screen pad. I actually kind of prefer this to an external monitor setup for this kind of workflow because I didn't need to alternate between looking at one interface and looking at the other. I could easily see both windows at once. And don't worry, Spotify was still on the side of the screen pad, cranking out tunes without needing to be on the main screen and potentially distracting me. Okay, lunch time. I usually just scroll through Twitter and emails while I eat lunch, so I wasn't going to need the second screen. With a three finger tap, I could turn on touchpad mode, which turns the screen pad into a massive touchpad and use that to navigate. Now, this isn't a great touchpad. There's no physical clicking mechanism and you're also like reaching over the keyboard, which is a little bit weird, but the tap to click mechanism does work quite well. And it's a nice way to take a break from the tiny little touchpad in the corner of this device, which is just really tiny and I hate it. Now, touchpad mode did cover up all the windows I had on the bottom screen, so I wasn't able to see what I had down there while I navigated this way. But my Spotify stream did keep going, and when I exited touchpad mode, which I could do with another simple three finger tap, they were right there where I'd left them. 
Now we happen to have some other members of the Verge team in the office as well. So I brought this thing around and asked what they thought of it. Whoa, okay. Wow, we. Oh, that's cool. I feel like a child who's using a computer for the first time. Oh, so far, nice. It's a little mushy. Um, doesn't sound too clicky. I'm expecting it to like mold to my hand. <laughs> I do like how seamlessly it just goes from one screen to the next. Like, I was expecting it to be a little bit more hitchy. So I could see this being helpful. Is this also touch screen? <gasps> yeah. You can touch everything. Like, I like that it can do this. This is nice. Like, a ta you do want a tablet that goes out because it will destroy your wrist if you're drawing all day on flat. This is actually awesome. Is this like 120 hertz? Yeah, you know? Yeah, oh. If I was guarding a museum, you know, and I had to have a lot of screens, mm -hmm. that would be my best use case. Mm. <laughs> okay, so back to my day. In the afternoon, I had to do some light editing on a batch of photos. This Zen book has this neat feature called task groups where you can save a group of tabs and apps and open them simultaneously later with a single click. So if you wanted a quick way to open Lightroom and Photoshop at the same time, which I did here, you can put them in a task group on the screen pad and save yourself a click. This is probably my favorite screen pad feature. I'm a huge fan. So to finish off the day, I had a Zoom call where I needed to reference some spreadsheets. So I stuck the Zoom call on the bottom screen and put the spreadsheets on the top screen. I could then pop the screen pad into touchpad mode without interrupting the Zoom call and use it to scroll through the data. When we were done with the spreadsheets, I swapped the two screens content to put the Zoom call upstairs and the spreadsheets downstairs using this handy little swap button that's right above the touchpad. Seriously, this button is the best. It is my favorite button ever. This was about when I had to plug the device into power. It generally lasts around a little over five hours with this workload. That's not a super long lifespan, and it is a bummer that this device may not last everyone an entire workday. But the Duo is running two bright, high-resolution screens, so it's a little more excusable than it would be on most laptops. If you're trying to save power, you can also turn off the screen pad with this handy button here. Seriously, this row of buttons is my life. Finally, work was over, and that meant it was time for some gaming. Now, the RTX 3050 Ti isn't designed to play the latest and greatest games at the highest frame rates and resolutions, but it can certainly make lighter titles a possibility, including Overwatch, which I'm playing here. Now, you'd think a dual screen device could be a dream machine for gaming. You could run a Twitch stream or have your Discord open on the bottom screen while your game runs on the top, but it's not quite that simple. When you click on something on the bottom screen, you actually click out of the game, which means that some titles will just minimize. Now you can get around this in some cases by running the game in windowed mode, but I mean, come on, are you really trying to run your game in windowed mode like all the time? Really? Come, come on, come on. Now this doesn't mean this is a bad laptop for playing games. It just means that there are still very cool use cases I think it could have that Asus hasn't quite figured out yet. And that's sort of a theme of this laptop. It's still not quite everything it could be. But as of now, it does what it's supposed to do. I figured out things to do with it that I can't do on any other device. Despite the fact that the touchpad is minuscule, despite the fact that I was typing like a T-Rex for quite a while, and despite the fact that the lid wobbles like a nervous kid at a spelling bee, I had a good day with the ZenBook Pro Duo 14. Now, is this a laptop you should buy? Only you know the answer to that question, in your heart. But on a device like this, that's high praise. For quite a few years, the answer to that question for many of these funky dual screen devices has been absolutely not. And I don't wanna say that anymore. I think most people will figure out ways that this dual screen setup could add to their workflow. So the decision now mostly comes down to one question. Do you want a keyboard in the front? Thank you so much to all the Verge staff who helped out with this video. And one thing we learned from all of those interviews is that at least some of them think I'm very cool for having this laptop, like some of them. So if you think I'm very cool, or if you don't, I don't really care, please like and subscribe to The Verge.